27342 9 Okay, we are live. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, last time we were looking at um, Jovian lunar eclipses and it turns out there's a real simple answer to that. Uh, I'm going to go through it in just a couple of minutes quickly and not answer the actual question on Stack Exchange because that'll take longer. Uh, but after that, our main topic today will be uh, this uh, question from Polkot about global warming and sort of a general overview of global warming, perhaps. And uh, I've actually already answered this question, uh, but he's made comments, or he or she has made comments uh, that answer my answers. So we, we, we're going to sort of get into the whole thing. And in, even if you missed my answer, which is down here, uh, which is, by the way, getting a negative three, I'll talk about that in a second, too. Um, we can, you'll also be able to sort of understand what's going on uh, generically. Okay, but before we do that, and we're going to put it in Git just for the sake of putting it in Git. Before we do that, I will do a quick answer for um, for the question that we that we had about uh, lunar eclipses on Jupiter. Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. Okay, and none of this data is actually uh, nothing here is actually private. So I, I mean, might be hopefully not. Uh, so nothing. You shouldn't worry about this if I do slip here. Okay. Uh, before we go on and look at this, we're going to. Um, going to mention something that's really simple, but uh, that I totally forgot or didn't really understand. Um, when, if you're on Jupiter and there's uh, an eclipse of, let's say, Callisto, uh, that means Callisto is receiving pretty much no light from the sun, or very little light from the sun. And I'm assuming this is a total eclipse, a uh, total lunar eclipse from Jupiter. Uh, what that means is that uh, anywhere on Jupiter you are, Callisto will appear dark. But what it also means is anywhere in the solar system, or even outside the solar system, Callisto will be dark. A lunar eclipse actually darkens the target object. So Callisto would be dark as observed from Jupiter, as observed from Saturn, and most importantly, as observed from Earth. Uh, it would be in the shadow of Jupiter. Uh, that is dissimilar to a solar eclipse. Uh, when the moon, for example, blocks the sun from the Earth, uh, and we have a solar eclipse, the, the sun itself doesn't get 100% dark. It doesn't, it, the moon hasn't obscured the entire sun. It's only obscured the sun for a portion, a very small uh, area, but the sun is still shining just as bright. The sun doesn't even realize that it's causing an eclipse. There's no change to it. Uh, so if someone lived on the sun, you know, whatever, they wouldn't really even notice a difference when there was a lunar eclipse. Conversely, when there's a lunar eclipse on, uh, sorry, when there's a solar eclipse, Conversely, when there's a lunar eclipse on Callisto, everything goes totally dark. People there would notice it. So it turns out the four biggest moons of uh, Jupiter, the ones discovered by Galileo, people actually watch them quite a bit. They're sort of a fun thing to watch. You can see them in binoculars, small telescopes. And more so than that, um, this is just as one example here. Sky and Telescope Magazine and probably a lot of others basically uh, print the phenomena of Jupiter's moons, as they call them, um, for every year. And you could probably find these for, for lots of other years if you wanted to. The most important thing here is, um, let's see, uh, let's see. Um, okay, so this is the thing we're interested in. EC for an eclipse by Jupiter's shadow. That is a lunar eclipse on Jupiter, a solar eclipse on the target moon, and uh, just darkening of that moon for everywhere else in pretty much the universe. Um, okay, so the... Um, so th this here actually tells us, and the moons are labeled one through four. Uh, one is Io, two is Europa, three is Ganymede, four is Callisto. Not surprising. And, um, and they tell us when it disappears. For example, this is an eclipse disappearance. And then it reappears. This is the wrong, yeah, reappears one uh, an hour, 52 minutes later. Um, so using this, you could very easily compute how long each satellite was eclipsed partially or completely, I think. And, and therefore just compute how long, the answer of course would be uh, how long each satellite is eclipsed. Uh, this only does work for Jupiter's uh, four largest moons um, and most famous moons because I don't know if there are tables like this for Jupiter's smaller moons, but they're probably less interesting because these are sort of the, the big lunar eclipses if you lived on Jupiter's surface, although I'm not exactly sure that a gas giant has a surface. So, you know, there's all that. So if you were here to, to sort of clear that up, I'll clear that up really quickly here. I will write a longer answer later, but right now, let's go to something a little bit different. Uh, global warming, a very hot topic, uh, and that was pun was intended. 
so probably a bad idea. Um, but let's be more specific here. We have, um, now what we have here is a question by someone called Polcott, who I might refer to as a he just because that's the generic, uh, but could be a she, could be a not a he or a she. Um, Polcott is, uh, believes global warming is occurring, like a lot of other people do, but Polcott b seems to believe that global warming is occurring at a much more dangerous, faster and dangerous rate uh, than other people think it's occurring at. So he posts a lot of these things that are not actually questions, they're phrased as questions, but they're generally, and we will mention that, so let's put that here on our list of things to do, uh, not really a question, because it really is not a question. Um, but it basically he tries to make sort of panicky warnings that are phrased as questions. So his, um, his question here, which I've answered, and we'll look at the answer uh, as we go along and answer the comments, uh, he believes that um, if the globe warms by 5 degrees centigrade, we will have 60 degrees centigrade heat waves. Uh, and 60 degrees centigrade, for those of you who, uh, who are uh, American, and I will go ahead and do this for 50 degrees as well, so we have some idea what we're talking about. Um, I did work this out yesterday. Uh, 50 degrees is 122 Fahrenheit, which is pretty damn warm. 60 is, I think, 100, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very, very warm. Uh, the max temperature on Earth, which I actually do, I actually have, I, let's go ahead and look that up really. It's actually sort of important. Um, I think it's like 58 point something, 136 Fahrenheit, 58 Celsius uh, in the Libyan desert. So. Um, Pretty warm, pretty warm. So we've gotten close to this, but we've nev never actually hit 60 in a measured location. Uh, now keep in mind a lot of the desert is uninhabited and there's not stations there, so it might have gotten warmer up to 60 somewhere else. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this in sort of the wrong order because I didn't stream my original answer. Um, I do have an answer here. Now you will notice it got downvoted to minus three, uh, and I did say it's not an answer, it's actually a comment. Um, and everything I say here is actually n not really that much about global warming. It's just basically facts uh, that uh, would, uh, you know, would sort of um, unpanic the, the Polcott panic. Um, but it gets downvoted by three because, well, they say in, in a society to find out who's in charge, uh, you know, find out who you can't criticize. Uh, almost anyone who criticizes uh, global warming, even in the sense I've done, which is simply to say, um, I, there's, there's nothing here that says global warming isn't occurring. It just says uh, the predictions made by Polcott are excessive, uh, both in the sense that it, they don't, they, they're not predicted from the data, and also uh, that they, uh, the things he predicts will happen if the temperature reaches that high, uh, won't happen either. Uh, so the damn vote of three is probably because there's a very um, strong pro-global warming uh, presence out there, um, and um, they don't. They don't like it when someone even hints at something that's not global warming, even when it has nothing to do directly with global warming. Um, and uh, I've actually had other questions downvoted. One was even deleted, and it was an answer, sorry, not a question. And again, it was just comments explaining the mistakes in the original poster's uh, uh, claims. Uh, and I actually think I got that one undeleted. It still has like a negative five ranking or something, very, very low. Um, and you know, and my personal opinion is that I'm not saying global warming isn't occurring. In fact, I, I am open to the possibility that the world temperature is changing, not just as a random function, but is actually increasing or decreasing. Um, and despite that, someone actually called me a global warming denier for not 100% accepting that global warming is necessarily occurring instead of possibly occurring. So again, a lot of negativity from the global warming people uh, they get pretty hot and excited, I think, and uh, who knows, maybe that's, that's how they're going to cause global warming. Uh, but in any case, this is, uh, so this is why I'm getting a minus three here. This is a controversial stream because I have to sort of answer these questions about global warming and people who uh, just feel that it's happening and feel we should never speak out against it are probably going to be unhappy about this. Unfortunately, I have no viewers which always helps a lot. Now, actually, let me double check to see no one's viewing this. Um, who knows, maybe my title will, will uh, attract viewers. Now, there is no one currently watching this. Of course, it'll be on uh, Twitch and YouTube later, so you can watch it then. Okay, so we won't look at my comments yet because I want to respond to his, um, his, and there's one other person, EBV, who actually makes the comments. So let's go ahead and look at these comments. Let's go ahead and cut and paste them and, uh, and take a look at what's going on here. 
And I haven't looked at, I sort of skimmed these before, but I've not really looked at them. So we are going to sort of be doing this together in the sense that I don't want to waste, I, you know, if I'm going to waste time answering this question, I want to waste your time as well. Okay, so first of all, um, EBV points out that a 5 degrees Celsius, um, and I probably should have said 10 degrees Celsius, um, may open areas to do human colonization, um, or colonization that in areas that are considered too cold for uh, people. Um, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. I did say, so oh, here it is. It's, it's my last sentence. It's not even a bullet point. All right, let's go ahead and answer this. Um, he, he wants a citation. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and try to minimally quote, which is never a really good exercise. Um, okay. So I'm actually sort of quoting a quote here, so it's going to be really ugly. Um, so I need to quote myself and then quote end the quote with, with his quote. We will, of course, look at the formatting here. Okay, so what we want to say here is we're going to be a little bit cautious. We just say, uh, my thinking here is, um, and you know, um, let's see, that, um, here's that Antarctica, which is of course the big, big chunk of cold land, and uh, many northern is mostly uninhabited and uninhabitable, uninhabited, no, it's uninhabited, in uninhabitable. Let me go ahead and turn on fly spell mode, which will check my spelling as I go along. Um, or it won't. I don't really know if it works that well. Um, it sort of works sometimes when it wants to. Uh, and in total, but a 5 to 10 degree Celsius. Now, notice I'm cheating here. I'm saying 5 to 10 because Polkot said 10 and you know, 5 to 10. Um, increase would make it a lot more inhabitable. A lot more inhabitable. Also, while there are cities that are fairly far north, uh, they have small populations. Um, and more people may move there as the weather becomes more clement, opposite of inclement. Now, the point I'm going to make later on um, that I don't think I can shove into this point is um, even if what Polkot is saying is correct, the, the, the sort of worst effect will be, uh, you know, areas of Earth that were currently inhabitable will become uninhabitable because they're too hot. Um, but um, that's not a huge deal because we already have areas that are uh, uninhabitable like Antarctica and, you know, the North Pole is not really land, so you can't count that uh, uninhabitable area. So it's not like this is a you know a new thing for oh no we now have areas on Earth where no one can live. Well we already have those. We you know and I realize there are people living in the Munson Scott uh, Arctic base, uh, Antarctic base 24/7 or whatever. I don't really know, but I realize there are a few people in Antarctica. But um, again, as a general rule, you're not going to want to. No one's really going to want to live in Antarctica. Uh, but my point here is going to be basically well. Yes, even if that happens and some land becomes uninhabitable, that's not really a new thing for the Earth. We've had that before, uh, and we'll, we'll probably have it again. And, and certainly, we've just changed where the uninhabitable, uh, and also put that in there, just changes where it happens. But I, that's not a point I want to make right now. That's going to be sort of at a, as a later point. All right, so now let's take a look at some of his other... Um, um, okay. Okay. Now, he's saying that, uh, I, I pointed out that extrapolation is not a valid statistical technique. Um, but actually, what he's saying here, he's, he's, he's saying that his projections are just the same as the international, I don't know what IPCC is, I was kind of hoping I'd get it in there. I think it's International Policy for Climate Change or something. Uh, and they correspond to that, but they don't actually do that. This is he sort of, uh, he, there's a thing in his original message where he actually points out that's not happening. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and uh, point that out, because... Um, Oh, I really need to figure out why this keyboard is so jumpy. It's not when I'm not here. Uh, it's only on the VM, so maybe I need to figure out 
keyboard jumpiness, but I'm not going to do anything about that right now. Um, okay. Okay, we're going to make this. Uh, we're going to break this into two two little um, chunks here. And we're not going to say pull quite yesterday, but okay. Okay, and um, there's two things we're going to be saying here, and I guess the first one we're going to be saying, um, he's saying that you have to extrapolate to, based on current trends, to predict. That's not actually true, but I mean, let's let's give him that. Um, and by the way, we, we don't need to quote. No, we do. What the hell? Um, okay, now we have to be consistent. I guess if we're going to quote him, we have to quote Polka, which I don't want to do. I, I don't want to put his name in there. This is his quote. Um, I'm going to say true. This isn't really necessarily true, but there's a bigger problem with what he's doing. And he's actually, uh, if you look at the original, he is actually extrapolating. Uh, he's extrapolating exponentially. And if you notice quickly, my own projections are a little bit. So he's not really using the uh, the uh, RC, uh, you know, IPCC projections. They simply extrapolate the potential increase, current exponential increase. Um, and then apply the uh, IPC. So it's sort of like half using their data and half not, but that's problematic. Uh, he's, he's basically creating his own, um, his own sort of a formula, his own sort of prediction here. Now, a lot of global warming advocates say, you know, we should listen to the, uh, not the, the, uh, the majority, we should listen to the consensus of scientists who work in this very specific area who won't contradict us, even though about 10% or maybe a lot more do contradict us. And that's because some of the studies that look to see how um, how many people uh, talk about global warming only look at papers that say global warming, not ones that say global temperature trends, global cooling, or anything else that would sort of indicate that uh, uh, the author has an opinion that uh, the global warming isn't occurring or even that global cooling is occurring. Uh, so really, it's a, it's a terrible thing to say in the first place, but even given that, we have someone here, Polcott, who is actually moving away from that and saying that don't listen to the consensus, listen to me. I'm more pessimistic than the consensus and listen to me. So this is, this is kind of extremism in global warming on the other side of the issue where I'm going to be, you know, and it could be correct. I'm not, again, you know, if I'm going to say that I don't think global warming is occurring, I certainly, uh, necessarily occurring, I certainly allow people to say, well, it's occurring and it's uh, even worse than people are saying it is. But again, we're sort of moving to the extremism of global warming with something like that. Now, here's the problem I'm going to have with this. And um, I'm going to say true, not really true. But the bigger problem here is he's doing an exponential. Um, he's, doing an, he's, he's doing an exponential uh, extrapolation. Now, you know, population increases exponentially, but it stopped doing that. Uh, bacteria increase exponentially, but if they kept doing that, the world would be just a big ball of bacteria, and even then it would just actually keep growing, uh, you know, twice its size every 20 minutes, so it would take over the whole universe. So most, the, the point I'm going to say here, and I'm going to be very careful how I say it, because I don't want to make a statistical mistake here either, um, exponential trends do not usually last a long time. If something is doubling in size every three days, uh, you know, uh, like babies, I don't know if that's actually correct, but you know, even infants in the womb grow very quickly at first. And if you were to project from that exponential trend, uh, you know, we would have uh, babies being born on the size of freaking planets or something. Um, so, th so the point I'm going to make here is you're projecting, you're making an exponential projection, and that is worse than making a linear projection because it's even more likely that the, the trend is going to stop. Um, and let's see, so my own projections, they simply, cr oh, actually, hang on. Oops, I should really read what he's saying. What does he do? Um, okay, they simply do that. So his, his point here is, so actually what I'm contradicting is IPCC, which I probably shouldn't do. Um, but actually, it's not a bad idea. So this is actually irrelevant. But uh, uh, now there's a comment he makes up here. Uh, interestingly, uh, he doesn't really seem to have a good grasp of statistics. But <laughs> sort of as a double bluff, he's going to say that uh, anyone knowing much about statistics and bell curves, blah, 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 blah. Um, and he has said stuff like this before. He has said, you know, anyone understanding basic mathematics can see that this will happen. Again, none of that is actually true. Uh, 
you know, and I'm not trying to insult him, I'm just pointing out that uh, really the point he's making is not correct. Um, so here I'm, I'm sort of more contradicting the IPCC, but let's go ahead and do that. Um, true, but the projection here is exponential, and while it's impossible to make general, oh, hang on, and though it's wrong to generalize in statistics, so there's my little catch-all, um, I would argue that, again, I'm, I'm, I'm buffering, I would argue that uh, uh, exponential trends are usually short-lived. Um, therefore, it's unlikely that CO2 levels will continue to rise exponentially. Um, and of course, CO2 levels can't rise after they reach 100%, which is true. Therefore, it's not a question of, of if CO2 levels will stop rising, will stop rising exponentially, but rather when. Um, okay, awesome. And now his his predictions are a most uh, more uh, more pessimistic. Uh, I'm not going to point. Out he is uh, by being more pessimistic. He's sort of breaking the global warming code of honor, which is you're not supposed to uh, make your own projections. But okay. Now here's here's something he says which is actually kind of hard. To, I'm not really see what he's saying here. Uh, when we examine this graph, we see that a single degree of temperature anom anomaly is associated with the shift of the whole temperature bell curve by two standard deviations to the right. Um, the, the problem here um, is he's saying two things that are actually contradictory to each other, unless he's making a very specific statement, which, which I will give him the chance to do here. Uh, he's saying that uh, shift of the whole, uh, you know, if, if it's true that a single degree of temperature anomaly in the mean is associated with the shift of uh, bell curve two standard deviations to the right, that would mean that uh, one degree equals two standard deviations or, um, sorry, yeah, one degree equals two standard deviations or one standard deviation is half a degree. Um, so the, the, the other thing he says here is at the same time, the bell curve will shift two standard deviations to the right. And so, so right, so it so says that, so that's okay. That part, if you, if you believe the standard deviation is one half a degree Celsius, then um, the whole bell curve moves two degrees to the right, two standard deviations to the right, uh, if there's a one degree change. But then what he says here, um, uh, so we examine the anomaly with the shift to the whole bell, okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. But what he says here is if we hypothesize that a single degree of temperature anomaly directly caused the entire bell curve to shift two standard deviations, then the consequences of a five degree Celsius would seem to be quite lethal. So he is saying that would be a 10 standard deviation, uh, you know, if one half degree, if two standard deviations is one degree, 10 standard deviations is five degrees. Um, so the problem here with this is in his comments, he's going to say something else. He's going to see, um, Okay, for one thing, he says, I have no immediate how the degrees correspond to one standard deviation and no basis for determining this. But he actually specifically states that he, he is determining that. Um, so let's go ahead and ding him on this. It's a minor issue, but, we, we, you know, it is... It is um, now, I know the word impeach is being used a lot for uh, President Donald Trump's impeachment, but the word impeach can also mean uh, impeaching a source. We're trying to show here that... Uh, Polcott's understanding of statistics may be too poor for him to be making uh, statistical uh, assumptions or calculations. It's a little bit cruel, but we do at some point have to, and it is, it is sort of a personal attack. It's not really a personal attack. It's more of a sort of, you need to learn a little bit more about statistics before you can make comments that are statistically based. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, quote him on this. Um, Am I using a, uh, I'm not using a list, that's okay. Um, in the original post, 
You say, 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 Say by Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson. Um, so, and this is actually, I feel, a fairly cruel stream because I'm basically pounding on some guy uh, with reason, but still. Uh, let's see. Oh, man, did I quote him? Uh, oh, yeah, in the original post, which you don't have, you say, um, um, a single degree of temperature anomaly of shift to the bell curve. Um, okay, so shift of the bell curve to standard deviations. If I'm understanding you correctly, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a buffer here. That means one degree, a one degree shift in, it means one degree equals two standard deviations. Am I misunder and again this is a this is padding, I know I'm not misunderstanding. Um, okay. So so I don't know okay so now let's see. Um, um okay. Um let me make some other comment here about um, ten standard deviations. Uh, let's see. Okay, according to the article, in temperature not only bell curve is shifted to two standard. This is actually, um, if something is shifted over two standard de 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 deviations, that means something that was previously, uh, you know, three standard deviations out is now only one standard deviation out. And th that's, a fif that's a calculation that can be done and apparently either the article or Polkot is doing it incorrectly, or it's not a shift of two whole standard deviations. Um, so here's, here's what he says. Um, this is the sort of other thing he says here. Um, uh, let's see. We also need to know the uh, we correlation between temperature anomaly and bell curve shift. Um, it's ridiculously implausible. Boy, you love it when global warming people say it's ridiculously implausible and at the same time predict 60 degree temperature, 60 degree Celsius temperatures. Um, okay, so this is where I'm actually literally, I'm, I'm confused because you might be saying something else here. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm confused. If the distribution is normal, if the distribution of temperatures remains normal, then a 5C anomaly, a 5C increase, we'll call it, would correspond to a 10 sigma increase. My increase. Um, are you saying that, or you, there's, a, there's a natural option here where it could be correct. That. Um, the temperature distribution will no longer be normal, which could happen. no longer be normal after the, which is possible. Uh, a lot of things, uh, you know, sort of converge to the normal distribution, but not everything. And the other thing you could be saying is the temperature distribution will remain normal, but both the mean and standard deviation will increase. In other words, and we'll say what that means, which everyone, which he knows, but we'll. In other words, the world will get hotter, the globe, we'll call it the globe. The globe will get hotter, not the glove, will get hotter in general, and the extreme temperatures will deviate even further from the, um, the I'm a pirate, uh, from the mean. That would be what a higher standard deviation. So I'm not, that's, I'm trying to see what he's, if, if he's actually saying that. Now when I do him on this, where he says my projections, um, only to a point. Um, as you note, um, somewhere he says the word pessimistic, and I get to, um, as you note, my own projections are a little bit more pessimistic. Uh, 
Uh, so he's, you know, he's basically saying, well, I'm agreeing with them. Well, I'm not agreeing with them, but I am agreeing with them. Um, okay. So now let's go back up here. Let's see. I, I did put a little line there, which is good. Um, okay, this is actually good. He's, he's basically saying that, uh, you know, even with air conditioning, you can only live at a certain temperature. And, um, and this would be... And this would be, this would be, I also need to sort of keep a track of where I'm ending answering the question and just making notes. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pop this down a little bit. Um, and I don't think this is accurate. And I found some sources that say it's not accurate. But fortunately, they're not actually on this machine. So I just realized I probably should have put them here. Uh, typically, only about the temperature of maximum 7C. This isn't actually true. Um, and one of the places that even says it's limited to 20 Fahrenheit, which would be 20 over 1.8, or, I don't know, 11 Celsius, actually said it could be even cooler, but it, the, then the air conditioning would become uncomfortably cool. But that's not necessarily an issue. Um, so let's go ahead and look at um, air conditioner max cooling. And we'll go ahead and look at, uh, there's several... How much realistic um, we tend to think of da, 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 da. and there's a nice little chat here. We should actually think about uh, talking to them just to annoy them, but but uh, I don't know if they want to be live on. Just won't get tell them they're live on stream. That'll really freak them out. That I'm tempted to do it just to freak them out. Um. um Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, I personally know that I've had temperatures that are right up to about 100 degrees here in Albuquerque, and it wastes a ton of electricity, but you can get it down to about 65 inside. That's a 35 degree Fahrenheit drop. So that's, this is, unfortunately, there's, 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 there's a caveat here that I don't think they have, but let's go ahead and quote this first. Um, And 55%, by the way, that's actually also where we get into the concept of uh, the heat index. Uh, but let's see. So I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put this down and give a source. But I want to put the different source that says, yeah, you can actually get colder than that. You just need to, um, you just need to, uh, you, it's just that it's going to get, you know, the exact, the direct air coming out of the air conditioning itself is going to be frigid cold. Um, but that may not be an issue. And we also want to talk about the possibility of new invention. Water cooling. Water remains pretty cool. And that's true. Water doesn't actually heat up as much. So 60 degree, you know, 60 degrees Celsius heat wave is not going to heat the water to 60 degrees. If it does, you would be, you would scald to death, basically, in water. And it, water simply has a much higher specific heat. Hello there, person who is, um, hello, friends. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, milk is stromu. Don't don't know what that is, but uh, welcome to the stream. And if you have questions, comments, uh, let me know. So water also remains cool. That's another thing we need to notice. And then then the other thing we we're saying is um, the sort of important point here is also going to be just because we make even if you cannot get it that cool, and it's ridiculous to think you can't. Um, the, the all that will mean is that now portions of the desert will become uninhabitable instead of the frozen areas where sort of humanity will have to move a little further north or south further away from the um from the oh jesus they're really they're really obnoxious about this in fact they're actually obnoxious enough um well let's see if we can we're gonna sort of jump around but let's see if we can stay on here as well um That's, and it is, it is Thursday at 1.49 p.m., uh, you know, Mountain Standard Time. Um, so let's, let's, I mean, if they had, if they hadn't done this sort of obnoxiousness, um, you know, of popping up and being really aggressive about it, I would have left them alone, because I don't, I don't really think we should, um, we should be annoying people like this. But, you know, oh, here we go. This could be bad. This could be so, so very bad. Um... Okay, good to have you. We are a full service company. May I ask a few questions to better understand your need? Uh, sure, but I'd like to ask some 
questions first. Uh, is that okay? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna and we're gonna sort of surprise them with the fact that they're live on a Twitch stream. God, this is gonna annoy the crap out of them. And then, and good because you know they, they've gotten to the point of obnoxiousness where they won't even leave me alone and say, no, I'm not really interested in talking to you right now. Um, and of course, we don't yet know if this is a live person. Oh, 8.49 p.m. is only because the uh, the VM is set to... Uh, wow, well, I can't even show the clock. The VM is set to uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So let's see what they say here. Uh, sort of an amusing a little uh, thing here. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone here, and they're just... This is, they're just, uh, this is just a robot. Jennifer, online agent, robot. Um... Oh, come on, Jennifer. Let be real. This will be so amusing. You have, you have really walked into a... And I don't blame you. It's your employers who decide that we're really aggressively going to try to talk to everyone. Oh! Um, okay, just a quick note to let you know. <laughs> uh, you, are live, you are live on a Twitch stream. Um, stream. My question is about the uh, 20 degree temperature drop limit that you mention. That you mention. Um, I'm sure I've had ACs that cool up to 35 degrees, that cool down to 65 when it is 100 outside. Uh, are these, um, are these, uh, is the 20 degree limit a specific to a type of air. We're, we're just going to give them an out here. Of all right, so we're going to really f with you here. This is this is the kind of cruel thing that uh, I can get away with. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can That'll scare the crap out of them. By the way, I don't even think they're in my uh, local area, but you know. You get on Google, you show up in all sorts of searches. And either during or after this, we will I will find the, um, the link that says um, the 20 degree limit is not a hard limit. It's a limit for certain kinds of air conditioners. Uh, that will be polite. Of course we'll allow you a minute. Or we actually, I should have said thank you for helping me. But we'll, we can do that later. And, and I will find where it says that this, the limit doesn't actually apply. Okay, I'm not going to answer her now because she seems to be uh, just saying one moment, please. So she has the last answer. So when I, because when I give an answer, it'll probably ding her, and she doesn't want to be dinged. Um, so this is this is you know maybe this is the thing we should be doing on this stream is finding people, uh, finding people who are helping <laughs> on sites to chat with them and messing with them. This is a very cruel thing to do. I agree. Hello, there's another message here in chat. Uh, so what's the plan here? Uh, well, the plan here is right now we're looking, we're talking about global warming today. We are in the process of answering a question from uh, Mr. Polcott on Stack Exchange. Um, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry. I'm an internet, and I, I, I realize you can see this too. Uh, Representative, may I have someone? Um, well, <laughs> uh, actually I'm live streaming now. Uh, so if there's anyone right now, anyone who I can talk to, anyone I can chat with right now, I can text with right now, that would be great. If not, that's fine too, uh, but I won't, uh, but I won't be, um, but I wouldn't want a call back. I'm trying to be as nice as possible here. Um, and I'll put another thank you in there. I think I already said thank you. Um, so let's let's just see if, this, uh, if we can panic this these people who, by the way, I'm 99 percent sure don't even service my area. And even if they did, I like my air conditioner. So we're going to sort of the extreme of being the very very terrible people to where I'm not quite feeling bad, but I will soon. Um, uh, okay, that didn't actually do what I wanted. Uh, you know, that's not the answer I wanted. But you know what? We're going to say no, thank you. We're going to get out of this chat. Um, no, please don't type. Please don't keep doing this. Um, okay, and we're going to go find the, um, I remember the word frigid was in there. It said basically that if you, if you overpower the, um, frigid jackal. All right, all right, all right. We'll see what you have to say here. Um, oh, did we lose the, 
No, 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 no. God damn, they're aggressive. I'm going to tell them that too if they keep doing this. Um, and I think it might be... Yeah, here it is. This is the... So this is the one I want to use because it says what I want. Hey, just like a global warming activist. Hello again. Are you trying to prove something about ACs? Um, well, I'm actually as part of answering uh, Mr. Polcott's question, and I don't know if he's a Mr. or Miss. Um, uh, he said that uh, air conditioners are limited to lowering the temperature by 7 degrees centigrade. They can't go, they can't do better than that from the outside temperatures. Um, other sites are saying 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which works out to 11 degrees centigrade, and, or Celsius, I guess. Centigrade is not a unit anymore. And I personally uh, believe, at least, I've seen, uh, you know, 100 degree temperatures here where the inside temperature is 65 thanks to air conditioning. Uh, so my goal is to show him that his, uh, his estimate of 7 degrees Celsius maximum is way off, and, and uh, in fact, you can get quite a bit cooler. And I think uh, this link that we're on now actually is going to say that. It's going to say, you know, you're normally limited to 20, but you can go colder than that but the vent air will be frigid. But that's not an issue if you're not standing right next to the air conditioner. Um, so hopefully that gets, gets us caught up. Okay. Um, today we're going to talk about, have you ever looked at... Da, 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 um, uh, let's see. A little bit likely lower. Uh, you can use, okay. So I'm trying to find the place where they say you can actually go, you can go cooler, uh, and here it is. Uh, when there was the temperature drops, if your system were to cool down, uh, the air coming out of your vents would be frigid and comfortable, which suggests it can do it. Um, you just not, you, you shouldn't. But again, it does show that the 20 degree limit, and here this is Fahrenheit, of course, because we're in the United States and using the correct unit, and let's go ahead and quote that. Hello! I mean, I've taken some dynamics and technically any kind of heat engine should be able to produce a temperature difference of 7 degrees if its makers really wanted it to. Thank you, that's very useful. Um, I guess my question is, um, what's the maximum cooling an air conditioner could provide? Uh, right now we're talking about a theoretical temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, which is, uh, I think, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, and we want to know. I, I want to know what's the you know what's the coldest you can get it using I guess what we call a uh, uh, you know not a uh, not a swamp cooler. Although I need to mention that too actually. Um, but using one of the more standard uh, air conditioning units. Uh, and and the question of course is is uh, you know I would think that if you had enough air conditioners floating around, um, you could make the temperature as cold as you wanted to. I mean, I guess temperatures, um, the air conditioning vents come out at about 55 Fahrenheit, I, I've heard. I mean, that's about as cold as you can get them. So my question is, is there really any limit to how cold you can get it uh, compared to the outside temperature if you had the money and, you know, you had, the, you had enough air conditioning, basically? So if you can answer that with any sort of uh, reasonable source, that'd be fantastic. Uh, my claim already is that no, there's the seven degree limit. It does not exist. There is you can definitely get it more than seven degrees Celsius cooler, and I've even done that here because if it was limited to seven degrees here in Albuquerque, we would all be toast. Okay. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and uh, while you're looking at that, I or if I've bored you to death. Um, oh yeah, I need this. I need to do this uh, link here. Okay, so now we're going to really, uh, and again, you know, I, I kind of feel bad about pounding this guy, but if you're going to make mistakes like this, you know, if you're not going to do your research, you, you kind of got to expect this sort of thing. Okay, according to, uh, and I think maybe I'll just close this site, this is the only one I really need. Um, according to um, quoting. <laughs> Let's even be funnier. Okay, here we are. Well, the theoretical <laughs> is zero Kelvin, but I don't have the required skill set to comment on the real world accurately enough, although it isn't much different. That That is, of course, um, that I think about it. I, I, I sort of meant the, uh, the air conditioners we use today. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, you c I guess you could take something out to space or something that would become eventually cool to near zero Kelvins. 
Uh, obviously, we don't want it that cold in our houses because we would all die. Um, but again, the the the, uh, the big issue here is you know, could people survive comfortably if the outside temperature reached 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, as a high temperature? And and um, and that actually hasn't happened yet. It's very close. We've but you know. It, and, and people don't necessarily live in places where the temperature gets that warm. But the question is, uh, the question is, could they if they wanted to? And, you know, uh, uh, just a casual fact I learned is Saudi Arabia spends 70% of its uh, money on air conditioning. Uh, so, you know, that, that, that shows that, uh, you know, that you do need to spend a lot of money for it because it's expensive. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. Okay, quoting... And I think in this case, I'm going to use like a block quoter. I want to use one of the cooler uh, quoting mechanisms, not just the, not just the back. Um, uh, and uh, sorry, I get pop-ups here that I have to ignore. And pop-ups are telling me to do all sorts of things I don't want to do, um, such as take insulin. So... No, actually, sorry, not take insulin, eat, because my blood sugar is getting lower, but I don't care. Um, this suggests the limit is actually, actually 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, I don't want to spell Fahrenheit, because I can't. <laughs> there we go. 11 degrees Celsius, just how smart I am. Eleven point. It's twenty divided by one point eight. Um, but the um, the first part of the sentence is it a sentence? Uh, the first sentence. Uh, the first sentence suggests the limit is really is actually twenty degrees Fahrenheit. The, the second sentence suggests. You can get, suggest you can get even cool. Okay, hello again from our chatter. The thing is though, because heat likes to spread from hotter areas to colder, and it is not physically possible to have a heat engine that reverses this process uh, that is 100% energy efficient, true. I mean, there is the flow of heat. With no energy lost, you're bound to produce more heat than you'd produce cooling, no matter what you do. And actually, um, I do know that, and I think that is the third law of thermodynamics, or maybe the second law of thermodynamics that entropy will always increase. So air conditioners, there's, you would never, you know, you never use a traditional air conditioner inside your house because the heating the, from the vent, the outside vent, is gonna create more heat than cooling. And that's just, uh, that's just because once hot air is flown into colder air, you can't unflow it. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's entropy, or en I'm pretty sure that is entropy actually. Um, and it's measured by like the amount of heat transferred divided by the temperature transferred from um, and basically you can get hot air to go to cold air, colder air, colder air, but you can't get cold air to go to hot air. And of course, once you have all this heating going on outside, uh, you also have to deal with the conduction. I mean, the wall, you know, even if you cool the inside, the heat that you're generating outside plus the, the ambient heat that's 160, you know, 140 degrees Fahrenheit is also going to be coming through the walls. Um, but here we're assuming, um, here we're assuming that we have not an infinite amount of energy, but a large amount of energy. And I would say it's just, you know, right now people are living where it gets to 120 degrees in the in, in high temperature. Uh, and they, they, they can, you know, they can handle it with air conditioning. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, even in 140 degrees you could handle it with air conditioning. You just need more air conditioning. Um, and uh, as you point out, in theory, if you had enough, if you had enough power... <laughs> which, you know, maybe maybe we don't, but if you had enough power, you could pretty much reduce something down to as close to zero Kelvin as you wanted, although in the process you would generate way more heat uh, than you, you cooled. But that would be okay, because that heat sort of going out into the, uh, is dissipating into the outside air. The, the world is pretty big. Um, so yes, I do, I do understand that uh, you can never decrease the overall temperature of something uh, in a closed system but since an air conditioner in a window is not a closed system, you can decrease the temperature outside, inside while increasing the temperature outside even more. At least that's what I'm hoping you're saying. Okay, um, but the second suggest, uh, suggests you can go even cooler if you're 
okay with frigid vent air. Um, and I could make some sort of snarky comment like, uh, just don't stand near the frickin' vent, moron. That would be very rude and it would probably break uh, Stack Exchange's policy. Um, uh, we'll just leave it like that. Um, uh, uh, okay. I think I'll include what you said. I don't know if I'll quote you, but uh, I might just, I might just, um, further, this applies only to current air conditioners. Um, in theory, there is no limit to how cold an air condition, okay, once again, don't quote me, that's just layman language, okay, we won't quote you, I mean, I'll say something similar to what you said, but I won't assign you the, the blame. Um, uh, to how cold an air conditioner can cool, except, and I'm going to be clever here, except, of course, zero Kelvins. Ah, <laughs> see? Makes me seem smart. Um, uh, let's see, there's a comma, and newer, m newer models of air conditioners might cool much more efficiently. Um, there's also swamp cooling, and I'll put it in parentheses, evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling. Why is that on a word? Oh, wow. So evaporation, evaporative. Okay, I need to add that to my dictionary. Uh, add. That. Or insert. Unfortunately, the, there's a real weirdness here. Insert. No. Okay, good. We're fine. Okay. Uh, uh, that works well in in deserts, which it does. Um, or simply cooling things with water, which doesn't heat up as much as land. Also true. It has higher specific heat. So we, we've pretty much nailed this guy in saying, well, you're wrong about air conditioning. You could probably handle it. You know, we could probably handle 60F uh, temperatures with either existing air conditioning, which is gets cooler than you say it does, uh, or new air conditioning, or water. Um, and now I'm gonna even I'm gonna give him the what he wants, uh, and and piss him off there too. So this is this is a I think in an earlier stream I mentioned we answer Stack Exchange questions to annoy people, uh, and this is sort of a progressive annoyance as you go through the paragraphs. First, we say you're wrong. Second, we say you're more wrong. Third, we say you're really wrong. And now we're going to say, even if you're right, you're wrong. This is just like a slap in the face here. I really enjoyed this, by the way. OK. The worst case scenario. Hello again. <laughs> I'm glad you like that. Um, is that portions of the Earth become too hot to be habitable. Um, this isn't a huge deal because there are already larger portions of the Earth that are uninhabitable, essentially uninhabitable, uh, because they are too cold. Um, 60C heat waves, and I know that if you start a sentence with a number, you're not supposed to do this. Heat waves in the desert will simply mean people move closer to the poles. And I could just say they move to cooler areas, but I it's going to be Antarctica, basically. Um, this is all just a scheme to introduce socialism anyway. I, I can't tell from, since there's no, um, since there's no um, reaction there, there's no emote there. I don't know if you're serious or you're just saying a lot of, a lot of, um, People who oppose global warming, who think global warming isn't occurring, believe it is a plot to uh, introduce socialism into the United States. Um, I, maybe. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm more about the science, and I'm saying that the science isn't really there for global warming, which is a different statement than saying, and then, you know, why people want to say global warming, there's a lot of explanations. Um, one, as people are moving away from religion, I think some people are thinking of the earth as sort of their, their deity. And so, you know, we have to uh, preserve the earth, cool the earth, help the animals do all this stuff because it is how we show uh, 
it, it, because we worship the earth now instead of deities that uh, want us to kill people and uh, you know do terrorist attacks. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but but I, I, you know if you're not religious, you don't believe that uh, the earth is a deity, so we, you don't see this. And uh, and other people, you know, and I, and I do think there is a good chunk of people out there. Uh, you know, there are some people out there who I think are being deceptive about global warming, and we we know from Climate Gate that there are. But there are also a lot of people who actually simply believe it's happening, and uh, you know because you know they've been told from scientists or whatever, quote unquote scientists, and so they really do believe it, and they they're just trying to save the world from themselves. Uh, and you know, you know, if if global warming really is occurring, we don't we don't really want to be. We really do need to to stop it if it's occurring, but it probably it, it be, you know there's no real evidence that it is. A lot of bad evidence, but no good evidence that it is it is occurring. Um, and like I said, you know, maybe, okay, here we go. I think global warming is happening, but nowhere near on the level as they're making it out to be. You're right, by the way, I grew up with a religious influence, and now I'm basically such that no matter what I try, I can never have faith in God. Um, and, th and that is, um, you know, that is, a. I think it's showing now 70% of Americans are currently Christians, which sounds high, but it actually used to be like over 90%. And, and young people today are moving away from the more traditional concepts of religion, uh, though I'm worried that they're moving towards sort of a more, um, there's a name for it um, when you worship the earth, uh, not a pantheic religion, but more of a, more of a sort of a nature is God religion. There, there's a name for it, and I don't remember what that is, mother nature sort of thing. Um, and like I said, you know, and, and um, that's another possibility. Global warming is occurring, but not, not at the level people are saying. Uh, the, the person I'm looking at here, Polkot, is actually saying that he disagrees with the consensus in the other direction. He believes global warming is occurring faster than the consensus says it's occurring. And uh, that's the nature of his, it's not really a question, by the way. It's actually a, a statement that he's trying to make, you know, phrased as a question. And I will ding him on that, but... Um, but, you know, and he's trying to say that, well, it could go up even more. It could be that we have 60 degrees Celsius heat waves uh, instead of just, you know, 50 degrees Celsius heat waves like we do. Um, so, so this is, I think, you know, uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is what I'm trying to answer here. And, and what I'm saying, of course, is, you know, global warming, there, there might be some bad aspects to it. Uh, but there will be, you know, just because it makes some places on Earth too hot. Antarctica is a huge, huge continent. Um, I mean, it's not huge for a continent, but it's very big as a piece of land. And really, if we could get some, if we could get people to live on Antarctica, that'd be very useful. Uh, I think that would be. There's a lot of land there that's unusable now uh, because there's 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 snow and ice there. Um, I'm not as convinced that near the North Pole is going to be as exciting because the North Pole is is actually uh, not land. It's 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 water. It's ice. But you know, um, and there's also. You, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to keep going on this, apparently. Um, I'm just going to keep ragging on environmentalists for a while. Um, I, I know some people believe that uh, we need a diversity of species to help ourselves. I don't think that's necessarily true. Species die out all the time in nature. And w it's really hard for us to tell whether a species is helping us or hurting us. I'm not saying that there are some that do help us. Um, and there are some that harm us, and some that if we got rid of them, probably you know some, some natural thing would occur or something else took over, and we wouldn't even notice it. So I'm not necessar necessarily saying we go out and kill species for no reason, but I'm also saying we shouldn't worry too much about species dying off naturally uh, because we don't know if that's going to hurt us or help us. And ultimately, we are intelligent animals. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And certainly, we should make more of a focus on becoming self-dependent, self-reliant, and um, and instead of uh, you know relying on these species to do something, we should get it to where we can do these things, even if the species dies out, either because we kill it or because somebody else kills it. You know, there could be a plague, there could be a comet, whatever. We we kind of want to be self-reliant. We don't really want to be relying on species to doing to be doing stuff for us. Uh, artificial photosynthesis would be really fantastic. They're starting to breed meat in labs. It's not there yet, but you know, and, and again, that would be nice. We don't really need the animals, and that would even be less cruel to the animals, not killing them, but instead just breathing, breeding things that are edible and taste good, but aren't really living creatures. Um, so that was my little rant there on environmentalism. Uh, let's go back maybe to this, um, let's go back maybe to this, uh, this, this bash of Mr. Polcott. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so I've, I've basically said that, you know, even if that small portions of the Earth become uninhabitable, um, and I think I already quoted this up here, um, I think we're getting towards the end of this question. Uh, and I did mention swamp cooling, and I didn't quote this source, but there's no need to. Um, yeah, it looks like it's 60, and very low humidity can last an hour. Um, correct, and we don't really have to worry about a 1 to 2 degrees Celsius increase in a century. It's just not significant compared to the problems we have now. And and that is, the I think, the standard, uh, the, um, I think uh, Mr. Polkot even mentions this. He even says there's the 80-year is sort of what they're giving us right now. Uh, yeah. The relationship seems to predict that from business as usual for 80 more years, uh, honestly, you know, we're not going to see... Extrapolation doesn't work, and exponential extrapolation is even worse. So I don't think we're going to get hit this uh, for 80 more years. And God, you know, we've advanced so much in the last few years. I think in 80 more years, we we could have the Dyson Sphere. We could have the giant Earth sunblock. Um, 80 years is a long time, and we are advancing very quickly. We could go live on Mars, maybe. You know, to hell with the Earth. Go live on Mars. Um, again, it's, it's just it's just too much panic given what I would say is the rea the the real risk here um, uh, it's exaggerated and what's int and what, you know I guess what bugs me about this message is he's taking the already exaggerated um, global warming threat and exaggerating it even more based on and he, the, he actually says this and this is my projections so you know mr. Uh, guy on Stack Exchange who is not, uh, as far as I know, is not part of the scientific community. Uh, you know, I want to make it even, make it seem even worse because of my projections. God, I hope no one watches. I hope he doesn't watch this stream. I'm going to feel really bad if he does. Well, I'm not. He is. Um, okay, so it seems like I'm tempted to check out this um, stream, but it's not really useful because I'm pointing out that you're never going to hit 60 degrees Celsius. You know, you're not going to have people walking around uh, in 60 degrees Celsius weather, they'll be inside, and they'll be cool, and they'll be fine. So, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm not, I, I, I was going to ding him here, because he, he makes statistical errors in his post. But I think I've already pointed that out, so I don't need to point out specifically he's an idiot. Uh, again, that's not a really nice thing to say. Um, oh, oh, here's why we need to quote the article. According to the article, the temperature... And this is just mathematically incorrect. But let's let's take a quick look here. Maybe maybe the article's incorrect. Maybe I can maybe I can f with them even more by effing with the source, telling them they're wrong. That's always good when you can like not only am I screwing you over, but the source you gave, I'm screwing them over. So let's take a look here at this uh, this uh, Hansen brief. Hansen, I think, was also the name of a, a rock band in the '80s. That that uh, he's a guy, but but he's a girl. I mean, that's that's a rude thing to say, but if you look at Hanson, you think, that was probably one of the, uh, let's do it, because I just, I think the stream is becoming too relevant. Um, let's look at Mr. Hanson. Ah! I think Mr. Hanson was probably, they have a song called Mbop. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to play it out loud, but, oh, come on. Let's see. I think Hanson is one of the actual guys. Oh, this is an ad. Come on. Why am I doing this? And and other people have commented on this too. There's actually that's a guy apparently, but I think he's one of the first transgender people. He just didn't know it at the time. Um. Okay, or she, I guess. Uh. This is and they all they all look like they're they're sisters, but they're actually. One of them actually is that one, I think. This way, this, I'm pretty sure this is actually a guy. Um, but I, I'm not the only person who's commented on this. Someone else pointed out uh, that they knew they were a lesbian because they uh, they liked Hanson. And they found Hanson to be a handsome uh, guy, and that makes you a lesbian. Okay, so now we've delved into something that's just really inappropriate and ugly. Now let's go back to global warming, because that's much smarter. Uh, where the hell was I? I was going yeah, to look at this Hanson article, and I got caught up in the name Hanson. All right, uh, not here, not here. Sage math, that was yesterday. 3D math was yesterday. We will not interested in this anymore. 
Uh, okay, please let me know if... Oh, God, there's three messages. I don't want to do this. Oh, uh... 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 Sorry, you can't help me. Um... Sorry, I thought our conversation was over. Um... Thank you for your help. I'm going to close this because I, I don't really want to see what she says after this. This is desperation. This is like, uh... This is like, uh... A girlfriend who won't leave you alone. Not that I've ever had one of those. All right. Okay, let's take a look here. We've gotten this out of the way. Gotten this out of the way. All right, now let's look at this uh, science brief. Oh, we had that up at some point and we lost it. Anyway. Uh, oh, so I went to look for Hanson. Um, let's see. Extremely hot outliers defined as anomalies exceeding three sigma, um, and thus a typical summer has only one. However, we showed that during the past years, the global land area covered by summer temperature has averaged increase of more than an order of magnitude. Recent examples uh, exceeding include heat wave. They didn't mention New Mexico. I'm annoyed. Although maybe we didn't have it. Um, uh, let's see based on meteorological patterns. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure that what this guy is saying is not the same as what Poha was saying. Um, shifting distance. And this actually does look like you're basically shifting the, um, the, the mean. Uh, although this actually looks a little bit like a, a, a bias distribution. Um, so I think I've bashed him. Well, I don't really know how we would bash him on this. It's pretty clear to me that what this article is saying is, is that the distribution is not normal, not that the normal distribution is shifting its mean. Um, and he's saying that it's become like 10% instead of, you know, point whatever percent, um, which could be explained by a shift in the standard deviation, uh, a shift in the, in, the, in the distribution, or by an increase in the standard deviation, or a combination of both. Um, but this would require like actual reading, and um, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Mr. Polcott has uh, has misinterpreted what this article is saying. It's simply pointing out that the distributions are changing, which is different from saying the stand, you know, that the mean is increasing. Okay, um, heard this. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, da, 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 da. I guess the actual who cares, and this is, you know, it doesn't actually matter if it's true or false, because, um, because I've, as, as I've pointed out that, uh, you know, this is not, uh, doesn't matter. You know, it's not going to be, people aren't going to be out in that weather. Um, and now I need to do some sort of header, because I'm going to actually modify my existing answer. 70 years for a one degree shift. Uh, yeah, not too worried. Plus, it, you know, they're all random anomalies in data. You look at data, it's very unlikely you're going to get a, a zero, uh, you know, if you, if you take any data, random data, any data, and you do a best fit line through it, um, you're going to get a positive or negative slope. It's highly unlikely they'll get exactly zero slope. And uh, the global warming, even if you accept that the city and the airport temperatures are representative, the, their R squared is very low. It's not, it's not, it's not really... You know, even if you want to draw a straight line through that, their R squared isn't really good. And of course, you shouldn't be using city and airport data as representative in the first place. Uh, in fact, urban areas make up very little of the world, but a lot of the the data that global warming uh, uh, advocates use. Um, so now I need to frame I need to frame my answer here because I already have one. Um, let's see. Um, and then I'll put it above the, the top line. So I'll say, edit to answer comments. And uh, plus other notes. We, that's random as hell. Um, now, I want to be careful here. I don't want to say something like, like most of your posts, you freaking moron, because that's rude. And even without the freaking moron, it's rude. Um, so I want to just sort of point out that this is not really a question. Um, this post seems more like your post, not this post, because this post is this post. Seems more like a call to action, like a warning call to action, 
I'm being nice, I could have said something much worse than an actual question. Um, just as a note, so again, we're going to buffer it some more. Um, um, edit answer comments. Da, 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 da. I think I think this is now all that this does. I will check that the block quote formats. Okay, good. And now we have this. And now I will edit my answer to. Um, and I will mention in the comments that I edit my answer uh, because um, not everyone checks edits. So we will do this here. And more than one way to do what I'm about to do here. Uh, I need, I, um, oh, you know what, I could actually just cut and paste from Emacs, couldn't I? Escape W to cut. On my other machine, I can't cut and paste from Emacs because of the way I use it. So we'll just do this. And now we'll just make sure it all looks good, or you know, to the extent that something. Um, at a uh, just as a note, you're posting more like a warning call there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That block quote looks great. Yeah, so this will piss people off. Um, so this is beautiful. Um, this is gorgeous. It's going to get downvoted. Like you know, more mods. They'll, they'll they'll actually increase people who read it just to kill off more mod, just to get lower ratings. Um, edited my comment, my post, to respond to comments. That is a good day's work done there. That is, we've really fucked some people over. I'm very happy about it. Um, happy I could share this with you, uh, both uh, Mr. Milk Ister Moo. Mm, I guess it's Mr. Moo with the word ilk in it. Mr. Moo and with uh, nobody else. Nobody else watching the stream. Uh, now, I've been going for about an hour and a half, if I, if I am correct. Oh, now we're in 11 minutes. I must have started later than I thought. Uh, but actually, I do need to be going for this, uh, you know, and, and this, we're, we've killed, we've beaten this topic to death now. Uh, I may come back later, but I'm not sure that I will. If we do, we're going to stay away from this topic. We're going to go back to, uh, I, I'm thinking I'd like to go back to the uh, creating a star map, or we might spend a little bit of time answering um, answering the question uh, that we originally came here for, which was uh, Jovian Lunar Eclipses. Uh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> yay indeed. Um, and the question for the Lunar Eclipses is actually going to be pretty short. I'm tempted to do it now, uh, but we sw I sort of did it at the beginning of this. I just need to write it up now. So uh, thank you for watching, uh, both anyone who's watching later or now, and special thank you to Milk Ister Moo uh, for providing me with some help on this. I'm going to stop streaming. Uh, you can see on my uh, Twitch page how you can contact me if you want to continue a discussion uh, beyond this stream. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to everyone later.